peace be to all. And to thy spirit. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory to thee, O Lord. Jesus came to a city of Samaria, which was called Zechar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For the disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast said, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst again, but whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I may thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that sayest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye, ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why? Talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot, and went her way into the city, and saith to the men, Come, see a man which could tell me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat which ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto him, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say ye not, There are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. 
I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of a woman which testified, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. This Sunday of the Samaritan woman poses one very poignant question to us. What are you thirsting for? Many people today speak about their thirst for knowledge or enlightenment, or more often some vague word like spirituality. Often what they want is something to legitimize their own thinking their own insanity, whatever they've cobbled together into some kind of self-styled religion, even if they'd be horrified to call it that. We see an increasing emphasis in Western culture on this kind of personal spirituality or designer religion, made to suit the particular wants and whims of the individual or the culture, while avoiding accountability for repentance and growth in likeness of the only changeless one the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, the living water. We see this escapism in the increasing popularity of adopting or incorporating into one's own spiritual path aspects of Buddhism or vague concepts of Eastern mysticism on escaping reality through meditation rather than focus and contemplation on Christ. I believe that many, if not most people today, are thirsting. They may even be looking for the truth, but many people are also very, very confused. We're a fast food culture that's grown accustomed to having it my way and buying into the arguments of the culture without submitting them to the church. That we can come to know the faith once received. I'm not here to give you what you want. I'm here, the church is here, to give you what you and I need. That is the timeless truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anything else is just delusional. This is the truth. If we're not willing to submit ourselves and our ways to learn the way of Christ, that he has entrusted to the church, then we're only deceiving ourselves in our thinking that what we're gaining is actually real enlightenment. In other words, if we're crafting a religion that suits us but does not transform us, through submission and self-denial, then what we're finding is actually just more escapism and not the path of true enlightenment. This is the problem of sin. We want it our way, not God's. My will be done rather than thy will be done. Then people wonder why they're not fulfilled, why they're still stuck, why they become so reliant on all those temporary things that help them escape but in no way satisfy their thirst for God and growing in that knowledge and love of him. Jesus reminds us that the way is narrow that leads to life, and few are those who find it. Why is this the case, that few are those who find it? It's because many are looking for the way of Christ, Christianity, on their own terms, and that is not Christianity. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way is narrow because the way is one, because Christ is one, God is one. The way of Christ as he has revealed it to his body, the church. Christ proclaims that this is the only way of ultimate enlightenment. We find in him a single path, not a multitude of choices which somehow equal the same thing. 
Christ's life is the way to freedom from our pride, from all that we fear, from all our struggles with ego. As Christians, we don't gain peace through escapism. Our struggles, our sins follow us, continue to haunt us, harm us, and others when we follow that way. Instead, we gain peace by bringing Christ into the midst of our struggles, our passions, our struggle for healing. Through our participation in the church, we learn to give them over to Christ, to lay them at the foot of the cross through confession, so he can transfigure them and bring us true enlightenment, as much as we allow him to. Healing, like relationship, can never be forced if it's real. In today's gospel, Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at the well. She's lost, confused, just as many are in today's world. She has had five husbands, and the man she lives with now is not her husband. She's abandoned the faith of her fathers and embraced a licentious life, all to no avail. She's still unfulfilled. She's still suffering. She's still in the dark, lost and confused. Christ proclaims to her that he is the Messiah, God incarnate, the living water. He proclaims freedom to her, not escape, but transfiguration and redemption. Jesus says to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Desiring this water, desiring true life, eternal life, she repents of her sins, turns from them, and finds him who is life itself. The apostles rightly name her Photini, the enlightened one. Her deeds are all revealed. Nothing more is concealed. No longer does she walk in the darkness of shame, for now she has found the joy and freedom of life with God through repentance. Not only does Fotini turn herself to the light, repenting, she also brings her people to the knowledge and love of God, that they too can find healing and salvation through repentance. Fotini becomes one of the great evangelists of the church, helping others to find the same living water. It is exactly that love for God, found in her new life in Him, that motivates her missionary zeal, a lesson for us as well. If we hope to grow our church, this mission, we need to learn to love God, more, love God more and love as God loves, not as the world loves. There are no temporary fast food solutions to the problem of our egos, our pride, our struggle with sin, and the sickness of our souls. Christ God offers us not a way of escape, of pretending these problems don't exist, of positive thinking. Instead, he offers us the opportunity to grow, to heal, to overcome them by embracing the reality of who he is and who we are called to be. As we grow in the knowledge and love of God, we learn the way of Christ, the narrow way, the only way to true enlightenment. This path, this way of struggle that leads to our enlightenment, our healing, is found in the church that Christ himself founded through repentance of our old way, our own way, and embracing the true light of Christ, so we may never thirst again. Christ says to us today that if we follow him, his way, not the way we want, but the way of patience, of godly submission, of humility, of conforming ourselves to the light that he shows us through his church, and exemplified in the lives of countless saints who have gone before us, like Fotini, then we will have our thirst satisfied too. Examine your life. What are you thirsting for? Is there anything holding you back from the Lord, from true enlightenment, from the fullness of life in Christ that he beckons us to receive? What struggle with sin, anger, lust, pride, or ego is standing in your way? Nothing is too great for God. Each of us is given the opportunity today to follow the lead of Saint Fotini. She stepped out from the shadows of darkness of her sins, of her escapism, to embrace the spiritual rebirth of life in Christ. With her, 
we too can thirst for Christ and drink from the water that Christ offers. His way, the water that springs up inside us to healing and eternal life. Amen. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen.